A beautiful day commences with a beautiful mindset. The moment you rise and shine and take a second to think about what a privilege it is to be simply alive, hale and hearty, and basking under the glory of the bright sun. The moment we start acting like life is a blessing, you will feel all the more charged for the day. So with the same feeling at the moment, I take the privilege of passing my hearty welcome as well as gratitude to all of you for being a part of this international conference on contemporary issues in engineering and technology, CH 2021, from across the globe. Despite carrying forward with the unprecedented times, GNA University always holds umpteen the attitude of gratitude to all the presenters, delegates for being a part of CH 2021. Hope is a thing with feathers, and with this inevitable hope in mind, I'm sure this two-day international conference will rock on the charts, not only to be the best learning experience for all of us, but to all the participants as well as the keynote speakers for the day. CX 2021 will provide an excellent international forum for exchanging knowledge that is pertaining to computer science engineering. The knowledge that is pertaining to computer science engineering and all the engineering related branches along with the interdisciplinary areas. CH 2021 was indeed designed with the lead motive to amalgamate researchers from academia and industry in understanding the concepts and collaborations. Before we move on further, may I announce the Reverend Dignities to please step forward on the stage. May I request Reverend Pro Chancellor, sir, Vice Chancellor, sir, Registrar, sir, the conveners for the day of CH 2021 to be on the stage, please. Jane University have always been a campus with a difference. The university always makes striving endeavors in imparting the best to the diverse group of students, be it the unanticipated ongoing times, the university students, research scholars, employees, they all have been rendered with the best quality education and the best ambience to support their endeavors. Keeping this unique feature in mind, CH 2021 has also been designed to usher the best practices and showcase the world, your acumen in the research areas for the two days in hand. May I request the Reverend Dignitaries to please step, step forward for the lamp lighting ceremony and to seek the blessings of Master Saraswati. As we all know that no academic event, whether it is big or small, can stand accomplished sans the benedictions of God Almighty. The blessings of Mas Saraswati before the commencement of the International Conference stands as a prerequisite for the day. In order to seek the blessings, we all have stood in front of Mas Saraswati to enlighten the room and brighten each of us to be a part of this two days international conference. I'm sure everyone, whether present here or virtually, is 
enthusiastically filled and supercharged with energy for the day. The grass, the grass. Flowers always enlighten the mood of a person, and when we have our honor and dignitary in front of us, who's the chief guest, Reverend Four Chancellor, sir. So, to honor his benign presence here amongst us for the two days, may I request Reverend Vice Chancellor, sir, to kindly acknowledge his presence with tourism. May I now humbly request the convener of the International Conference, CH 2021, Dr. Monica Hanspal, the Dean Academic Affairs, to come forward and deliver the inaugural address to the August staff. Thank you, Dr. Disha. Very good morning to everyone present over here. I welcome you all in today international conference on contemporary issues in engineering and technology. This CIET 2021 organized by Faculty of Engineering, Design and Automation. It's my pleasure to walk you through the conference, introduce you to the speakers and delegates who are attending the conference. All the attendees from across the globe today, they are present over here. The theme of this conference is contemporary issues in engineering and technology. Technology has transformed our lives and has influenced everything, what we do and how we do. It has ravaged science our daily lives. From the time we wake up in the morning and till the time we go to bed, everything is technology driven. The rate at which technology has developed in the past decade is astonishing. Innovations and advancements in every field is amazing. We see how artificial intelligence IoT, data science, blockchain, virtual reality, cloud computing, edge computing had transferred, transformed our lives. There was the time when we used to talk about 3D printing. Now, additive, techno additive manufacturing is what we talk. We talk about 4D printing technology. Industrial IoT is another in. Now we talk about interconnected machines, Industry 4.0, Agile manufacturing, alternative sources of energy is what we look upon to. Biomedical engineering has also made tremendous advancements. Unfortunately, if someone loses limbs, our artificial limbs are as good as our natural limbs. You imagine any sector, it has been transformed by technological advancements in recent years. From the healthcare sector to retail stores, everything is technology driven. In education sector, even we see technology has changed tremendously. During pandemic, 
COVID-19 situation, we all have felt the effect of technological advancements. While staying at home, we were still connected, which was possible only with this technology. All advancements in technology has made our lives easier, faster, better, and a bit more fun. All these advancements will be discussed in these two days. To begin, let me introduce our expert speakers for two days. On 8th January 2021, that is today, Dr. Manoj Gupta from National University of Singapore will be delivering keynote address. I hope this talk will give new insight into this emerging area for all of us. Then Dr. Yon Kosmin Mihai, Cybersecurity Officer from European Union Agency for Law Enforcement from Romania will share his ideas on current cyber threats and cyber attacks. He has magnificent experience in cyber crime and cyber security. On second day tomorrow, Dr. Hiroyuki Kameda, professor from computer, professor of computer science in Tokyo University of Technology, Japan, will deliver his address on recent trends in technology, followed by a plenary session on AR VR technology by Dr. Carlos J. Oshka, who is a CEO in one digital consulting Spain. At the end, Mr. Alvin Chen, Director Simmons from Singapore, will address the delegates. There will be five technical sessions during these two days, where different presenters will present their research work. I hope this conference will prove to be a great platform for all the presenters, delegates, and experts for sharing their ideas on technological advancements. At the end, I would like to express my sincere appreciation to all of you who generously joined and contributed their research to make this conference a success. On behalf of Faculty of Engineering, Design and Automation, I would like to thank Mr. Gurdeep Singh Sidra, President and Co-Chancellor, GNA University, for showing his trust in all of us. I would like to thank Dr. B.K. Ratan, Vice Chancellor, GNA University, and Dr. R.K. Mahajan, Registrar, GNA University, for their continuous support and encouragement. Without taking much of your time, I once again warmly welcome each and every one of you. Have great learning sessions and fruitful deliberations. Thank you. I must say, Dr. Monica, how beautifully you have given us a wonderful tour of these two days of international conference. Can't agree more that everything these days is technologized driven. Now I have uh, the humble tea of calling upon Reverend Co Chancellor Dr. V. K. Ratan to step forward and offer his opening remarks for CIT 2021. Good morning. I, on behalf of DNA University, I welcome our Chancellor Sir, Honorable Sadar Gursharan Singh Ji Sira, Pro Chancellor Sir, Sadar Gurdeep Singh Ji Sira Ji, and whose presence will definitely motivate the young minds present here. I also welcome distinguished guests, invited speakers, other dignitaries, faculty, Deans, registrars, staff, students, and participants, members of electronic and print media, ladies and gentlemen. 
Welcome to the International Conference on Contemporary Issues in Engineering and Technology, CIAT 2021. The conference is organized by Faculty of Engineering, Design and Automation, GN University. With the emerging areas of technology, the world is going through a rapid change. This advantage should be extended to all literate and illiterate, able bodied and disabled users, urban and rural people. In this respect, our world impact is divided into two privileged and underprivileged. There is a need to bridge the gap between underprivileged users and digital society. With this aim in our mind, we have chosen the theme of contemporary issues in engineering and technology in the conference CIET 2021. The conference has been planned so that the students from academic institutions, experts from industries, academy and academia take part in the conference and share their experiences. We are fortunate to have so many eminent speakers in these two days and I hope all participants will be benefited from their ideas and talks. We had received a very good number of quality research and review papers from all over the globe and after blind review we have selected some of the very good papers. GNA University is always taking a lead in organizing such kind of research based events where all can learn and share their work. Our main focus in GNA University is on the experimental learning, industrial internship, learning to learn principles, flexible private-based study programs and holistic development of personality, which in turn will ensure employability of the students. GNA University benchmarks itself with leading institutions across the world in terms of intellectual capital, academic quality, delivery practices and industry linkages. The university credo includes focus on meritocracy, transparency, accountability, ethical behavior, and service orientation. At the end, on behalf of CIT organizing committee, I thank all the speakers, referees, track chairs, volunteers, paper authors. I feel this will be an exceptionally high quality technical event, but you must judge that for yourselves. We do not hope that we do hope that you have a most fruitful time and enjoy the technical programs. The major outcome that we expect from the conference are a national and international framework for the changing technology around the world. Last but not the least, I would like to thank all the delegates. I would like to conclude my speech by encouraging the delegates to participate with increasing number in all the sessions and discussions through the digital platform for the next two days. The presence of such an eminent speakers is indeed a source of inspiration and encouragement to the GNA University and student community. I wish everyone a successful, safe and fruitful conference. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chancellor, sir. Your opening remarks for CH 2021 have actually given us a clear-cut bird's eye view of the CIT 2021 for the two days in hand. Paul is uh, being humbly made to our impeccable guidepost and honorable pro-chancellor, Sardar Gudeep Singh Sivaji, for showering upon us his choices and unconditional blessings always. Reverend sir, all present here truly believes that with your conviction in us, that we are able to hold the CIET 2021 in full spring. So a request is also being made to declare the conference open so that the impending day unfolds beautifully in front of us with your blessings in hand. Good morning, all. It gives me an immense pleasure to welcome you all to this international conference on the contemporary issues in engineering and technology. We are grateful to all the guest speakers and the delegates for the being part of this conference. We thank you for the, your kind gesture. In spite of your busy schedule, I am sure 
delegates will greatly benefit from the experience, expert, expertise of the speakers. We are living in the distinct time in which the world has become more connected than ever before. The technology is not only changed the way we work, but also impact on our social and culture and economic development. Through this conference, we hope that you all will learn about the new development in the leading and technology field and how you can contribute to make the difference in the most dynamic discipline of leading and also hope your participation will be the another move towards the government. Once again, I welcome all the members of the steering committee and the participants this conference and wish you all to have a learning experience. A team of faculty, engineering and uh, all the computer main, especially Vikram Sir and Anurag Sharma. So I congratulate both of them to organize such a beautiful conference and the design and automation for making great efforts to bring all the researchers from the across the globe on the platform of the Chilean University. With these words, I declare the conference open. Have a great learning and great two days. Thank you. So we are sure your vision for these two days of the international conference will contribute a huge success for the GNA University. It is a stupid fantabulous moment when you have the wonderful moment of assembling together on the stage to acknowledge the hard endeavors of everyone who's involved in making the international conference a success. So it calls for a time when the sincere efforts and research acumen will be offered wins in the form of the release of the proceedings of CIET 2021. So I humbly call upon Reverend Co Chancellor Sir to please step forward, Reverend Vice Chancellor Sir, Registrar Sir, the conveners Dr. Monica, Mr. Dupati, Dr. Vikram, Dr. Anurag, to have this most awaited moment for the release of CIET 2021 proceedings to be done. The request is also made to Mr. Samir Varmasa to be on the stage, please. Sir, one minute. Samir, Samir. Sir, display. Sir, thoda open kar liyo. Now that we have felt blessed with the release of the conference proceedings, it's time for us to introduce our keynote speakers for the day one of CH 2021. I feel honored from the deep core of my heart to introduce Dr. Manoj Gupta as the first keynote speaker of January 8, 2021, CA 2021, the first day. Dr. Manoj Gupta represents the Department of Mechanical Engineering at National University of Singapore. Throughout his academic career, Dr. Gupta had been bagging first-class distinctions and had been bestowed with a gold medal in his doctorate. Dr. Manoj Gupta's research interests varies in the development of energy-efficient techniques, to the development of the lightweight materials, as well as to the development of the magnesium-based biomaterials. Dr. Gupta is a visiting professor at a global front and possesses international collaborations with the universities in India, as well as UAE, China, France, Sweden, and my the list is ongoing. So before I pause here, may I request Dr. Gupta, he has also, for your knowledge, has authored six books attended more than 200 plus conferences, publications in more than 500 plus journals, and two US patents. And trust me, I feel all inspired in introducing Dr. Manoj Gupta amidst us on the day one of CH 2021. Dr. Gupta, I hand over the mic to you in the virtual mode 
and the ball is all in your court. And trust me, the zealous participants are inquisitively awaiting to witness the statement in form. So you are one stalwart for whom everyone is waiting for the day to unfold. So all over to Dr. Manoj Gupta. Are you able to hear me and see my screen? Hello? 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 Can you hear me? Uh, yes, sir. Sir, you're screen. Can you hear me? Are you able to hear me? And screen? Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're audible. Okay, so I can start now. Hello? Yes, sir. You can start. You can start. Okay, uh, greetings from Singapore. I, my name is Manoj Gupta and uh, it's my pleasure and honor to be part of this conference, of course, remotely. And uh, to start with, I would like to thank the management of GNA University for organizing such a beautiful conference and to Anurag to keep in touch with me and answer my questions. So without further delay, my focus of the talk uh, in line with the theme of the conference is what are the current issues that our engineers should focus on and especially the one in the materials engineering and mechanical engineering and maybe in the electronics engineering. And this topic deals with the magnesium technology and through this talk I'd like to highlight the significance of why this technology which is almost a trillion dollar economy can be very beneficial for a big country like India. Magnesium is not a uh, unknown element. We know it for almost last 100 years and its use was first indicated during the Second World War, World War time. If you see the image on the left hand side, you see that all these ladies somewhere in the Europe are trying to use magnesium for many applications, which includes the tracer bullets, bombs and the lightweight equipment. <laughs> So the yeah. Uh, are you able to hear me? So you are audible, but your slides are not visible, sir. Can you share the screen? Screen. Uh, hold on. Hello? Let me know when you are able to see the screen, then I can resume. So you can continue. 
and there's a lot of vibration of the voice or echoing is coming from your side so is my voice clear so your voice is clear you can speak you can start okay so uh, i will resume my uh, illustrating that this magnesium technology was first used during the Second World War in real-time engineering application. And in 1947, it was used in the aerospace sector. As you can see in the middle image here, the conveyor aircraft. And in the left-hand side, right-hand side image, you can see it's used in the famous Beetle cars. And that is the transportation or automobile sector. So why we need to focus on magnesium-based materials and its technology is because it is quite important for the good health of our planet in general, for the good health of the plants, humans, as well as animals. So let's try to go with the health of the planet. And we have seen that the major issue that we are facing is a global warming. We have seen the flash floods in Chennai in December 2015, and we have seen the near drought in 2019. We have seen the forest fires at minus 10 degrees centigrade in Alberta, Canada, and we have seen 45 degrees centigrade in France. Now, these are very uncommon occurrences. And the prime reason for this is the global warming that we are facing, irrespective of where we are on this planet. You have seen these icebergs coming up near to the Arctic Circle in the neighboring countries, like this one appears in Canada. And their frequency is increasing. The reason, global warming. As a result of the unforeseen catastrophic events that we are seeing across the world, many countries in the world scrambled together to sign Paris Agreement somewhere in 2016. And their main aim was to keep the global temperature rise to below 2 degrees centigrade with reference to the pre-industrial time, which is taken as year 1880. And apparently, currently, we are at 1.3 degrees centigrade higher. That gives us a window of 0.7 degrees centigrade. Now, why they say 2 degrees centigrade is that because if we increase the environmental temperature by 2 degrees centigrade, we will be entering into a tipping point where we will not have any control in our environment. And that means there's a lot of catastrophe. So as per the goals set by the countries, they wish to reduce the CO2 emission by 2 billion tons by year 2025. So mark the year 2025. Now, if you look at the health of the planet Earth, for example, you will see now that there are three sectors which are the chief contributors of carbon dioxide. And that's the electricity sector, industrial sector, and the transportation sector. We have made a lot of strides in electricity sector by coming out with the solar power, wind power, nuclear power. But the progress in them is not at a pace which we want to see. In industry, we are trying to use the cleaner fuel. We are also seeing the government legislation coming up to emit less and less CO2. And the transportation sector, which is one of the major contributor of the greenhouse gases, is the one where we can make an immediate difference. Now, the concept here is very simple, that you reduce the weight of the vehicle that you drive and you will use a less fuel per kilometer. When you burn less fuel, your CO2 emission will come down and the global warming will be favorably affected. Now, how serious is this is through this slide, you can understand that currently we have entered the six mass extinction event. That means the first five extinction event were created by nature and this one is created by humans. When we say mass extinction event, that means we may lose from 70 to 95% of the life forms on our planet. So that is why it is called as a mass extinction event. The reason global warming is one of the chief reason. And if it goes with the same level, we will see that Arctic Ocean will be free of ice by 
as early as 2030, which is within 10 years. And once that happens, the sea level will increase. And once the sea level increases, we will lose our coastal area significantly and all the low-lying countries will disappear. A small graph at the bottom of the slide shows that what is the significance increase in the catastrophic events or the extreme events like drought, forest fire, floods, and tropical storm since 1990s. So you can see the spike and these spikes are coming up all the way from 1990 till now. And this will exponentially increase if we don't take preventive steps. So as a result, the doomsday clock, which marked the end of the civilization, or you can say mass extinction event, is only two minutes away from 12. And the three main factors which controls the movement of this doomsday clock is a proliferation of the nuclear weapons, the climate change, and the new technology. Of course, the nuclear weapon proliferation is largely in control, except for some of the rock countries which still exist. The sir, climate change, your... it's not visible, sir. I think it has gone. <laughs> Shall I do it again? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I'll try to go back again uh, on this slide and. Uh, let me see what I can do. Share application. And I click on this one here. Share again. And I come back. Are you able to see my slide again? Yes, sir. Okay. So I resume from this doomsday clock. And what you see here is that when we were growing up, I'm much older to many of you there. Anything which comes in our way, like a food grinder and all this thing, we used to be very happy without knowing that how damaging it possibly can be for the environment. So the technology developed in the last century has toxified many of them, I'll not say all of them, our land bodies, water bodies, and the air bodies. So as the responsible researchers, we have to ensure that we come out with the good technologies. Otherwise, we are heading for a catastrophic. Now, if you look at this slide, for example, the Mayan civilization indicated the end of the world in 2012, and Hindu civilization says is the uh, end of Kali Yuga by 2025. So now put this word 2025 here is the same target year which is set by the scientific community, that is uh, all the signatories of the Paris Agreement here. So what it says is that we have a window from 2012 to 2025 to shape our acts. If we don't shape our acts, we will have a tough time. And most importantly, our future generation will be having a very bad time. Unlike our time in last century, now the modern generation is very much aware of what they should embrace. That means the green materials and the green technologies. And that is where the world is going. So we cannot just create a technology. And if it is toxic, people are not going to buy it from you. So we have to be extremely careful in what we do research in and what kind of materials we use. Now, most of us eat vegetables. The work done in Australia have shown that if the soil is contaminated, for example, in this court case, the gold and the manganese, it can find its base in the body of the plant. That means the leaves and stems and everything. One of the elements that can also be taken by plants is aluminum. And once you have the aluminum in the plant, if you look at this image on the right hand side, the growth of the root is stunted. That means the crop that you get per hectare of land will be limited. But if the magnesium goes in the food chain, you look at the plant on the right hand side here with much longer shoots. That means it's a nutritional element for the plant. It both very good news for a good health of the plant. Now let's look at the perspective of uh, humans and animals. The picture on the left hand side, you see a blue dog because this guy is drinking some contaminated water. So the technology and unlawful discharge of the chemicals in the water bodies lead to this color. Now the person on the bottom left is the Hulk, which is also his body was contaminated by some chemicals. It's a character in Avengers movie. I, I think most of the young generation is aware of that. 
So this can happen if we don't control the pollution through the material and the technology. We can become blue and green and uh, practically all possible color depending on what is going in our drinking water. Now, if you look at the image on the right hand side, it basically tells you that when say air pollution, water pollution or the soil contamination, it affects our body adversely. So we should stay away from the contamination. Magnesium on the other hand is wonderful element. It is required for 300 chemical reactions in the body. It is required for the good muscular system functioning, good nervous system, good cardiovascular system, good immunity system. And if a problem in sleeping, you can take magnesium pills. And it's the fourth most abundant cation in the human body and mainly stored in the bones. It is also used to treat the condition of the noise pollution, which is called as the tinnitus. And if you take magnesium with vitamins A, C and E, it will benefit you. Another problem that our civilization, irrespective of the international boundary is facing, is the electromagnetic uh, pollution. Each of us have a phone. Many of us have a laptop. Each of us has a food grinder in the kitchen. We watch TV. We, we have the fridge in the home. We have electronic gadgets everywhere. If we work in the close proximity of these electromagnetic gadgets, then what happens is that this, which is supposed to be the fifth largest pollution at this point of time, it induces some currents in the body. Once it induces the currents in the body, our body doesn't know how to handle these currents. And as a result, it affects our metabolism and the hormone production. Once these two things are affected, it becomes cancerous. So that is why the World Health Organization has said group 2B possibly carcinogenic. So we should stay away from the source of electromagnetic radiation. And this pollution has no boundaries. Each of us are susceptible. So we try to investigate magnesium compared to aluminium because aluminium is used for electromagnetic shielding in most of the electronic components. And we found that in both the radio wave and microwave frequency, the magnesium is better or similar to aluminium. So why should I replace better or slightly superior magnesium uh, for aluminium? The reason is very simple. I'm reducing the weight of my phone by 35% on a component basis, and I'm replacing a neurotoxic element with a non-toxic element. So that is a driving force. This element appears in the periodic table like any other element in the group 2A is the red circle here. It has a multiple positive points like low melting point, lowest density among the structural elements, wonderful specific strength, excellent damping, electromagnetic shielding. It has acceptable properties of ductility models and the cost. Only negative it has is a wet corrosion. That means it tends to be a bit more reactive when exposed to the water. Now, when you compare with the workhorses, of the elements that are used in the mechanical system or electrical system, basically aluminum, titanium, and steels. It has lowest density. It has a lowest melting point. That means less energy required for production of this element. It has specific modulus, which is similar to all other elements. And your specific strength is next to the titanium. Now, if you look at the picture on your right-hand side, you will see that the blue band is for magnesium and its properties are overlapped by aluminum, titanium and steels and nickel. That means this material can replace all these heavier elements in many engineering applications, including biomedical application. Sustainability is a, another buzzword. We should work on the material that are sustainable. They should not be in short supply. If they're in short supply, you develop the technology and you lose it within a few decades. You will not be able to make money out of it. So basically, when you have the magnesium, it is the sixth most abundant element in earth crust and third most dissolved mineral in the water. It is 12 times more than magnesium in our planet. So if you can use aluminum for, say, 100 years, you can use magnesium at least 1,200 years at the same rate of consumption. If you look at the universe, you'll be surprised that magnesium is the most available element, even higher than iron in our universe. So if the human race end up colonizing moon or the Mars as the attempts have been made, then you can always take magnesium and magnesium technology. And that is why I say that it is God's own metallic element. Now, 
other thing for me which i always try to do is to show that where this material can be used it's not like i'm saying it can be used so it can be used no not really it has a history in the cars which was on my cover slide some people feel that magnesium is flammable but their understanding is misplaced it is used in the engine components used all the way back in 1970s no issues general motor which also makes our ambassador cars in the past use it in the boot area they launched it in 2012 selling point 75% lighter than steel 33% lighter than aluminum brand name porsche started using it from 2015 and they use in the roof area they just by the roof replacing the roof sheet metal they saved 10 kg and they compared with aluminum and carbon fiber reinforced plastic and they found that magnesium is the best choice south korea has done a wonderful job they have created a full road map they started working on this material in 2004 and by 2016 they are using it in many of the automobiles including hyundai car the steering wheel that you see maruti in india is using it for time unknown so many of these automobile companies are using it but they don't tell you because that's almost like their trade secret of light weighting the vehicle aerospace sector another very powerful sector transportation sector way back in 1947 the year of independence of india magnesium was used fighter aircraft bombers b36 it was used way back in 1950s sikorsky helicopter used it Lockheed F-80C, 100% made of magnesium. Russian bombers use magnesium. At Federal Aviation Authority, they have approved the use of magnesium-based material once again in the commercial sector on the very simple basis that for a 700-seater Airbus A380, you save 4.2 tons of the weight just by replacing the seats in the cabin. that's all you have to do maritime application us is using in the amphibious vehicle the vehicles which can operate in the land and water to make it light the concept is make it light so that you can be in the war zone for a longer time cruise ships used in the engine application bmw car also used in the engine application the country like singapore is trying to make the armed robotic vehicles using magnesium because for a 25 tons armed robotic vehicle you save 3.75 tons if you replace the body or aluminum in the body by magnesium and that is a 15% saving so with the same amount of the fuel you can last for a longer time in a war zone and i have not talked about the electronic sector for example samsung phones many of you will have samsung phones the body is made of magnesium the camera bodies the television body whenever you hear light laptop 1.1 kg it is made of magnesium only robotics why you want to use steel in robots it takes lot of energy to move the parts of the robot replace with magnesium you will need less energy japan is already started using in the high speed trains in the sleeper berth area everyone want to reduce the thing so that is these application just highlight the importance of this material where india is lacking behind it's a trillion dollar economy if we position ourselves now and start using it now we itself have a very big market to use this material and the technology what we are lacking is a awareness of what other people are doing now in our lab now i go to a slightly research part but not too much of research is we started making this material using the dmd technique is very simple you just take the material in the crucible you heat it using a furnace you homogenize it you pour it and then it goes down you heat with argon gas jets and you have the material you can collect in the mold the picture on the left hand side shows the equipment we have which will cost you like 4 to 5 lakh rupees in india is not too expensive very affordable you get the billets we have upscaled this to 20 kg where you can get the billet of about 5 foot uh, high and about 1 foot or 2 to 3 foot in diameter with 20 kg because the light weight you can get really big billet for the industrial application we also created this 
material using the powder metallurgy route, which is very simple. You can take the powders, you can blend it, you can compact it, and then you can sinter it. Our focus is on microwave sintering. Microwave is the same microwave that you use in your home. There's nothing special about it, except that we create a device inside that in which you have a inner crucible, outer crucible, in between you fill up the silicon carbide particle, and then you enclose that into a reinforcement. You calibrate this system, time of the microwave on with the temperature, and you know exactly, for example, you reach 640 degrees centigrade in 14 minutes in our setup. So if I want to heat my or sinter my material, I will just switch on for 14 minutes and my sample is sintered at a speed which is 90% better than the conventional sintering and at an energy level which is at least 90% better than the conventional sintering. So if I reduce the time, my productivity increases by nine times and if I reduce the energy, my impact on the global warming or my carbon footprint goes down. So that is the advantage what we do. Microwave can go inside your compacted material and heat it up in two directions, inside out and outside to inside. And that is how it's a very, very effective way of heating powder metals. One of the materials that we focus very strongly is using magnesium-based nanocomposites where we realize that nano reinforcement can improve multiple properties of magnesium that includes ductility, mottless, dynamic properties, high temperature stability, creep, wear, fatigue, dry wet corrosion, ignition, electromagnetic interference, and the bioresponse. And this is by the suitable combination of your magnesium-based material, with the nano land scale reinforcement. Now, for example, we developed this alloy in the second row with four zinc, three gadolinium, and one calcium. Anyone can make it. And you get certain set of properties. Now, these properties, what I'm showing it to you in the second row here, are better than a commercial, very expensive WE43 alloy, which is used in the aerospace application. Then if you bring in the nano composite technology, like you put, let's say, 2% of zinc oxide, you get certain values like 350 plus megapascal yield stress, 700 megapascal as strength and ductility still remain more than 10%. Now, these properties are better than mild steels, which are used in the structural applications. Now, so you have the capability to not only replace aluminum, but the steels in many, many applications using this material. Another big market which is coming is, is orthopedic fixation market is about $7 billion at this point of time around the world. Our body needs implant. We have two types of implant, something like hip implant and the knee implant. These are the permanent implant. We don't want anything to happen to them. But once you have a crack in the bone or a fractured bone, then we want the implant till the bone heals. Once it heals, the doctor do one more surgery and remove that implant. So a patient has to go two surgeries. Now, if you put magnesium-based implant in there, you make first surgery and forget about it because this magnesium will gradually dissolve over the time in one year time or so, and you don't have to do the second surgery. And that is a driving force of using magnesium-based implant. And the country like Germany is doing wonderfully well. We have the magnesium base stents. We have the screws and plates made of magnesium. The concept is simple. Magnesium is non-toxic. Our body needs it. Anything in excess will be taken out by our system. So we developed a number of materials and we look at their tensile properties because the properties has to be superior than the properties of the bone. And we found that 149 megapascal, which is the strength of the bone, is lower than the UTS value, which is displayed by this composite. So it's okay from the tensile properties point of view. And let's look at the compression properties. Again, the values that we got for these materials are much higher than the compressive strength of the bone. So mechanical properties are fine for these kind of materials. How about corrosion in the human body? And when we talk with the surgeons, they say less than 0.2 millimeter per year, good enough. And that is what we targeted at. And we got about 0.1 millimeter per year. So it is qualified to be used in the human body. 
Then we also gave some of the nanocomposites based on magnesium to the dental surgeons in the hospital and they did the cell viability and they say that they are 0% cytotoxic when they are used in the biological medium. And that is how we have started a startup for the magnesium based material in Singapore. Now, another problem that humans are facing is plastic pollution. Just this year only, not this year, last year, 14 million tons of microplastic was littered on the ocean floor. And that is a work done by the Australian researchers. And the American researchers have told that microplastic has entered our food plate. So the microplastic is a one which size is less than five millimeter. And it can enter our bloodstream, lymphatic system, and liver. And where you find it? Tap water, soft drink, salt, beer, oceans, flying insects, fishes, and birds. So it's not like you are non-veg, so you are susceptible. Even vegetarians are susceptible. Because for a size of about 2.5 micron, it can breach the membranes of the vegetable. And now we can get it in the carrots, lettuce, broccoli, potatoes, and apples, and pears also. So if we accumulate too much plastic in our body, it can lead to the cancer, weakened immune system, reproductive problems, nervous systems, and hearing loss. Its actual impact is still under research, but people are expecting that we may be facing some very serious issue in very near future. So in order to replace plastic, because plastics are lighter, we are also trying to develop ultra light magnesium based material which can almost float in the water if you look at the one here it's almost floating in the water our aim is to make it pop out of water so that way once you overlap the density values you can easily replace plastics in many applications and that is the another goal of our search work so in conclusion i would like to say that the magnesium technology or material is say trillion dollar market if you combine engineering and biomedical application and all the sectors that can be benefited from that you don't need a serious infrastructure for these materials whatever you have for aluminum based material you can slightly tweak it and use it for magnesium based material composite technology is important nanoparticles have shown amazing results from magnesium and people are also investing on investigating on amorphous and the hollow reinforcement. So final message, this technology has arrived. Many countries have started to use it. It's time for industry to adapt for their own benefit and for the benefit of uh, the planet and the inhabitants. So with that, I conclude my talk with acknowledgement to my students who have worked all these years. And I thank you for uh, all of you for your patience. So now I'm open to the questions if you have any questions. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, a wonderful uh, a session. Wonderful. Participants, if any participant is having any query, you can ask, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thanks. You can write the questions in the chat box also.
शिवेंद्र सर यू आर प्रेजेंट हेलो सर यस आई गॉट ए क्वेरी या Uh, okay, so the query is that you uh, currently told uh, that you are going to flow that magnesium in water, right? Yeah. So, like, uh, what are the things that you are ad additionally uh, mixing with magnesium so that it can uh, uh, float in water? Like, what are the extra things and like, what is the ratio of the things that you are adding up in the magnesium? Okay, it depends on. Uh, there are a few ways. The first way is that you can put the hollow reinforcement in there. or you can alloy the magnesium with lithium or lithium has a very very low density so we are able to get up to 1.2 zone and with 1.2 it can float all day but if you want it to pop out of water you have to really get close to 1 okay uh, so we are Yes, yeah, sir. You told that you are going to add uh, how much of magnesium in water? Like, like how much of uh, how uh, how much of lithium? Zero point one percent. No, no, no. The one that you saw was about twelve percent lithium. Okay, so if we reduce it to one percent, then uh, like then what will be the situation? Your density will be close to one point seven four gram per cc. Then it will not flow. Have you got my answer? Sir, yes. Sir, yes. Sir, yes. Sir, one of the participants. Uh, hello. Uh, very nice session, sir. Mandeep Singh here. Here. Yes. Thank you. Sir, uh, my. And uh, I want to know one thing that if I use the nanoparticles of the magnesium. so Nano can be it can be used in the fabrication of uh, like uh, uh, because expertise in the antennas designing so can i use the magnesium based material for the substrate and the patch in the antennas uh it depends actually what is the main objective of you to use magnesium as a metallic element if you are using say aluminum to see why you are using aluminum if it's only the weight basis yes you can replace aluminum by magnesium because both of them are metallic elements number 2 the nanoparticles the nanoparticles can change some of the properties like micron size particle cannot do and then you need to add them in very low amount like 2% or something like that and you wonderful combination of the properties by putting the nanoparticle so it is one of the way in which you can improve multiple properties of magnesium it decrease or it remains same what will remain same again 
Conductivity, it depends on what reinforcement you put. For example, are you putting insulating reinforcement or are you putting the conducting reinforcement? If you put conducting the insulating reinforcement, then it can increase. For example, if you put graphite, you can expect it to increase. But then you have to do the testing to ensure that you have integrated them nicely, not in the clustered form. So you have to prepare a material, homogeneously distribute it, and do the testing. OK. OK, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Ion Cosmet is the second hero speaker of day one of CX 2021. Dr. Cosmet is the cyber training officer at European Union Agency for Law Enforcement Training Romania. Dr. Cosmet is also the associate professor at Policy Academy and visiting professor at the University of Polytechnia of Bucharest and vice president of RISA. Not only this, Dr. Bosman is the coordinator of the project, current challenges in the field of cybersecurity. Dr. Bosman is also an expert in the project that is enhancing training capacity for Romanian judges. This is ongoing. Dr. Bosman is the manager of the project. Analysis of the has included boundaries of the project that is transnational network for integrated management and the Romanian Center. Just, just wait for two minutes. Uh, we'll be starting within two minutes. Please bear with us. Good morning, sir.
सर यू आर प्रेजेंटर नाउ इफ यू वॉन्ट टू शेयर एनी पी पी टी और एनी कंटेंट देर इज अप्शन हेयर टू शेयर द कंटेंट यू कैन शेयर योर एप्लीकेशन थ्रू एज वेल एज यू कैन अपलोड अ फाइल टू शेयर बट देर सम डिस्टर्बेंस सर यू आर नॉट ऑडिबल सर यू आर नॉट ऑडिबल सर काइंडली सर काइंडली वी कनेक्टेड सर और वी प्रेस सर यू आर नॉट ऑडिबल सर प्लीज रिफ्रेश इट और रिकनेक्ट द सेशन अगेन हेलो यस सर यस सर नाउ इट्स सॉरी थैंक यू थैंक्स थैंक्स अ लॉट सॉरी फॉर दिस टेक्निकल इश्यूज सो हेलो एवरीवन It is a great honor for me to be invited as a keynote speaker to this uh, conference. And uh, talking about uh, contemporary issues in uh, engineering and technology, we have to focus on the latest challenges in the cyber field. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic accelerated the process of digital excuse, transformation. Excuse me, sir. Sir, please wait for two, three minutes. Then, please. Sure. Okay. Yes. Okay. Sir.
the team members for this For the DNI support in making CH 2021 a gala success. Dr. Anurag Sharma and Mr. Vikas Chumbo. Sorry. Thank you, sir. All over to Dr. Kosman now. Really a... Dr. Ion Kosman, all over to you. So, hello, everyone. I hope uh, you are able to hear me now. Uh, one more time, uh, I can say that it is a great honor for me to be invited uh, as a keynote speaker to this uh, conference about uh, contemporary issues in engineering and uh, technology. So discussing about uh, issues in uh, technology, we have to focus on the latest challenges in the cyber field. Uh, we could see in the last uh, period, uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, uh, there was a lot of uh, accelerated process of uh, digital transformations. So uh, many services uh, migrated to the online environment. But uh, in this on, um, environment, uh, there are a lot of vulnerabilities that can be exploited by cyber criminals. So the numbers of uh, cyber incidents and cyber attacks uh, increased a lot uh, lately. I think uh, now more than ever, education and uh, awareness uh, are more important uh, than ever. So uh, today it is my privilege to present you the latest uh, cyber security uh, challenges. And now, please uh, let me just a couple of seconds to share uh, my presentation. So uh, I hope uh, you can see my presentation. I will make it in uh, full screen. So we're going to discuss uh, about the Yes, sir, your screen is visible. Thank you. Thank you very much for your input. So. Uh, as uh, you presented me, I'm a cybercrime training officer at uh, the European Union Agency for Law Enforcement uh, Training, CIPOL. And I had the privilege uh, to be a trainer to many other institutions. So I would like to share now my experience in the field of uh, cybersecurity and uh, cybercrime. I will uh, present you the evolution of malware, uh, the online and offline attack vectors, and uh, some best practices uh, for uh, uh, cybersecurity. So, uh, as you can see in uh, this uh, screen, uh, there are a lot of uh, cyber threats, but uh, regarding to the European Union Agency for Cyber Security, ENISA, uh, we can see on the, in the top of this uh, cyber list, uh, there is the malware. So, there are a lot of forms of malware, like computer, computer viruses, uh, worms, uh, trojans, adware, spyware, ransomware, and so on many types of malware that can infect our systems, uh, uh, that can steal our uh, money, and also they can uh, um, deal with, um, with our uh, activities uh, and sometimes with our lives. And I'm going to present you some cases. Um, there, what, what can I say about uh, the latest uh, trend in the malware? According to these uh, statistics, uh, um, there is an increase uh, of the number of the new forms of malware. So every day there are released uh, around 230,000 of new forms of malware. There are automatic tools and sometimes artificial intelligence is used to create uh, new forms of malware and to spread it uh, in, uh, in Internet. Also, there is a 50% increase in malware designed to steal personal data. Uh, the cyber criminals observed that uh, during pandemic uh, time, uh, we uh, uh, started to use uh, more uh, uh, of our systems uh, to make online shopping and uh, make online transactions. And uh, so the cyber criminals try to steal our personal data and to steal credentials, especially banking credentials. 
and uh, there is an increase of 265% uh, uh, of uh, fileless uh, malware. So we know that the traditional malware uh, stayed in uh, different kinds of files, but nowadays uh, cyber criminals inject a different kind of uh, scripts in the websites and in applications uh, using uh, different uh, vulnerabilities. So we, when uh, we uh, access uh, these websites or uh, um, applications, we can be infected. Our systems can be infected. So we can see an increase of fileless malware, which are more dangerous than traditional uh, forms of malware. And uh, lately, in the last year, we saw a lot of malware designed specially for mobile devices. We uh, started to use our mobile phones more and more often uh, to do uh, different kinds of online activities, uh, online shopping, uh, online transactions. So uh, the cyber criminals focus also on our mobile devices because uh, much more easy to, to infect them and to steal uh, our data. Uh, there are a lot of forms of malware, but uh, I would like to speak about four types of malware that can infect uh, our system and can uh, uh, really affect uh, our lives. So uh, the first form of malware is uh, ransomware that uh, encrypt um, um, the files and sometimes block uh, the access of our files. And uh, cyber criminals uh, demand the ransomware to be paid in order to deliver us uh, the uh, decryption uh, key in order to access again uh, our files. So as you can see in this picture, there are a lot of forms of uh, ransomware lately, starting with uh, CryptoLocker in 2013, when uh, the cybercrime groups uh, succeeded to steal more than 24 millions of euro from different kind of victims from uh, different kind of uh, countries in the first uh, two months. Then uh, WannaCry in 2017, I um, think that uh, you all uh, heard about WannaCry because uh, this form of ransomware uh, succeeded to uh, infect millions of uh, computers from all around the world in just a couple of, uh, of uh, hours. So WannaCry was released uh, uh, in, uh, on a Friday um, evening in 2017, and on the next day, already millions of computers were infected uh, with this uh, ransomware. And uh, I can tell you that um, this uh, form of ransomware affected different kinds of systems, but especially the uh, systems from the medical uh, areas. And uh, in the UK, many hospitals, uh, their systems uh, were infected and the doctors couldn't uh, access the patient uh, data files. So uh, they couldn't uh, operate, uh, even the, some patients were in a critical uh, uh, form. Uh, then uh, PUBG, you see with uh, RED in 2018. I uh, wrote with RED because it's a different type of uh, ransomware, it's a different generation. In this kind, uh, the cyber criminals uh, didn't want uh, our money, uh, but uh, the cyber criminals, uh, after they blocked uh, the access to our files, uh, wanted us to uh, download uh, an application from a website. Uh, that application had, was a game and uh, the victims had to play that game for one hour in order to have access again to their files. So we could see in this uh, situation that uh, some criminals want us to perform some activity. So it was a game, it was uh, playing a game, uh, PUBG was the, the acronym of that game, Player Unknown Battleground. Uh, but uh, today or uh, tomorrow, who knows uh, what uh, they demand us uh, to do in order to access uh, our files again. Then uh, we could see another uh, type of ransomware, uh, GenCrab in 2018, uh, which uh, succeeded to encrypt a lot of uh, files from uh, computers from all around the world. And uh, last year, uh, Ryuk in 2010, uh, succeeded to encrypt a lot of files, especially from the public institutions uh, field. So uh, different kind of ransomware that try to uh, block the access uh, to our files, uh, try to encrypt them in order to demand uh, ransom paid usually in cryptocurrency to uh, have access again to our files. Uh, but uh, lately we saw um, a new generation of ransomware uh, like Revil, Maze, a Networker, or Aco, uh, different kind of ransomware that uh, try to uh, steal our data before uh, they encrypt it. So uh, cyber criminals uh, try to put um, pressure on the victims uh, 
uh, after they uh, they um, exfiltrate uh, the data, they uh, try to put pressure and to um, say that if uh, the ransom will not be paid, uh, they will uh, make public all the, all the information. So in most of the cases, uh, the information sometimes uh, is uh, sensitive. So that's why uh, uh, sometimes uh, the victims uh, pay the ransomware in order not to be published uh, this type of information. Uh, what, we, what could we see uh, uh, regarding the evolution of ransomware during a pandemic? So uh, we saw the evolution of uh, ransomware as a service model. So nowadays, uh, many cyber criminals uh, can uh, go to the dark net and uh, just rent a different kind of infrastructure for, uh, uh, for uh, ransomware. So uh, cyber criminals with, uh, without knowledge uh, and uh, without experience uh, in uh, technical, from technical point of view or from operational point of view, they just uh, borrow with a couple of, uh, of dollars uh, this infrastructure and uh, they can uh, use uh, ransomware to infect uh, a lot of victims, a lot of computers and to um, ask for a ransom. Um, lately, uh, we saw that uh, the cyber criminals um, uh, use uh, these uh, platforms and they put uh, these uh, platforms uh, ransomware as a service in, in the darknet, uh, so other cyber criminals to end. And also they uh, try to help uh, uh, the victims in, in what way? So the victims uh, who infected have uh, infected our their systems and uh, they can access uh, their files. Uh, they need some help uh, in uh, paying the ransom because they uh, don't know exactly what is a cryptocurrency and then don't know how to pay that cryptocurrency. So the cyber criminals, uh, they have different kind of uh, chat. They have uh, uh, people uh, specially uh, designed to help the victims, uh, to, to help them to uh, buy some cryptocurrency, to have a crypto wallet and to transfer them uh, uh, money in order to deliver the uh, encryption uh, decryption uh, key. So uh, they uh, cyber criminals uh, try to uh, help the victims uh, in order to pay the money to them to pay the ransom. Uh, then uh, we saw a shift from ransomware to blackmail, as I uh, told you, uh, and uh, you could see in the previous uh, image. Uh, there is a new generation of ransomware that uh, try to exfiltrate the data and then to encrypt in order uh, for some criminals to put pressure on the on the victims. Uh, we saw a new social engineering techniques that exploited the COVID-19 pandemics element. So uh, especially in the first uh, pandemic uh, period, um, all the people, they didn't know many things about the uh, coronavirus. So uh, people wanted to, to discover and to find different kind of information. So cyber criminals created a lot of uh, websites and uh, they spread a lot of, uh, of uh, fake news. And uh, their websites sometimes were infected with, uh, with malware, especially with ransomware. And uh, when uh, the victims uh, or when the people uh, access this uh, website, uh, they could be uh, infected. We could see also in the last period that uh, the ransomware become increasingly uh, targeted and the target was the public and the private sector and uh, sometimes the critical infrastructure. Uh, we saw during the pandemic and in the last uh, months, uh, we saw that uh, uh, cyber criminals uh, targeted um, the infrastructure and the system from the medical uh, field. So many hospitals uh, in the, all around the world they were infected uh, and the doctor couldn't perform uh, operations because they couldn't uh, access uh, the, the files of the patient. Uh, a couple of months ago, um, a uh, person in uh, in uh, Germany died because uh, she was in a critical condition. Uh, uh, she had to to go to a hospital, but uh, that hospital unfortunately uh, was a victim of uh, ransomware. All the files were uh, encrypted, so the doctors uh, couldn't use the systems. So, so they had to uh, redirect uh, the victim to another hospital. But uh, because um, that woman had a lot of injuries, uh, she couldn't survive uh, to to go to another hospital. So we could see in this case uh, that uh, ransomware, uh, because uh, affect uh, the systems from hospitals, can affect also our uh, our lives. Um, if you are a victim of uh, ransomware, you can enter in. Uh, in 
in the website nomoransom.org, which is a project of the European Union Agency for Law Enforcement Cooperation, Europol. And uh, if you are lucky enough, uh, you can um, find uh, in this uh, website uh, the decryption key uh, in order to decrypt all the files uh, from your system. Another uh, um, malware uh, that can affect uh, our systems and especially our money uh, are the financial trojans. These uh, trojans uh, try to um, steal a credential uh, from our uh, online banking accounts and uh, once they enter in these accounts, they'll try to um, manipulate uh, online transactions. So, uh, as you can see in this picture, there are a lot of uh, famous uh, financial trains uh, started with uh, Zeus in uh, 2006. And um, I can tell you that um, the hacker who succeeded to develop uh, this, uh, this uh, form of malware uh, steal uh, millions and millions of uh, dollars from uh, victims from all around the world uh, using, uh, using uh, Zeus. In 2018, um, uh, this uh, hacker decided uh, to uh, put uh, the source code of this uh, Trojan online uh, in the darknet. And uh, since uh, 2011, many kinds of uh, cybercrime organizations used uh, this uh, source code of uh, Zeus to create different kinds of forms of Zeus. So uh, today we saw in the latest reports of different uh, agencies and uh, uh, cybersecurity companies that even now uh, uh, there are a lot of forms of Zeus that can affect uh, our uh, systems. Then uh, we saw Dridex uh, in uh, 2014 uh, that uh, succeeded also to infect uh, many kind of uh, computers and uh, the cybercrime uh, group uh, operated with Dridex uh, succeeded to steal a lot of, of money from our accounts. Cobalt in 2016, Cerberus in 2019, and Motet in 2020. Well, uh, regarding Cobalt Strike, uh, you can see uh, in red, I will tell you uh, more details about this uh, in the future slide. But what can I tell you about uh, Cerberus and Emotet? Uh, these forms of Trojans are very complex uh, and uh, target our systems. And uh, Cerberus, for example, uh, uh, focused lately on uh, mobile phones. Uh, and uh, it was a pretty sophisticated uh, Trojan. Had a lot of, uh, of um, modules uh, that uh, could uh, detect uh, if uh, there were some uh, antivirus solutions uh, or uh, or uh, if uh, it was um, a sandbox uh, uh, environment. So uh, he succeeded to stay still until uh, it was uh, uh, infected a uh, mobile phone. Uh, he was uh, uh, able to, um, to check uh, the gravitational uh, um, acceleration uh, um, um, sensor. So uh, Cerberus uh, knew if it was on a phone or uh, just a personal computer like a desktop and uh, he was activated lately only on uh, phones. So uh, he was able to steal uh, different kind of credentials, especially uh, online banking uh, credentials in order to manipulate and do different kind of uh, online transactions. Emotet also uh, appeared uh, in the last years, but lately in 2020 become more and more complex. Uh, it has a modular uh, structure, so uh, he was connected to a command and control server and uh, he was able to um, download the latest uh, version of uh, this malware. So he could stay updated all the time. And uh, then uh, also uh, he could uh, download different kind of other forms of uh, malware, like, uh, like a Rook uh, ransomware. So after stealing different kind of sensitive data and uh, online uh, banking uh, credentials, uh, we saw that uh, downloaded different kind of uh, ransomware. And uh, in the end, the victim had also the, all the files encrypted. So. Um, Couple of words about uh, Carbonac you saw with uh, with red. It was a very dangerous uh, choice, um, and uh, many systems from financial institutions and uh, banks uh, were infected. And I can tell you that uh, the cybercrime uh, group uh, from uh, uh, that operated with uh, car with. Um, with uh, Cobalt, uh, uh, named Car Carbonac, succeeded to steal more than one billion of dollars from uh, 
banks and so, uh, financial institutions from all around the world, from countries like uh, Germany, Ukraine, uh, Russia, China, India, United States of uh, America. Uh, the cybercrime group, uh, they had a different kind of modus operandi, like uh, money transfer. The cybercriminal transfers the money uh, from uh, the victim accounts uh, to their accounts. Uh, and uh, another modus operandi was inflating the account balances. The criminals raises the balance of bank accounts and the money mules uh, withdraw the money at the uh, ATMs. And also they could uh, control the ATMs. So imagine uh, some guys that were going to the, um, some banks and uh, without doing nothing, uh, just speaking on the phone, they uh, uh, told the coordination of uh, coordination of the ATMs and the hackers uh, who control all these ATMs uh, remotely, they uh, um, uh, put uh, the ATMs uh, to throw out all the money. So imagine that uh, that guy just uh, took all the money from ATMs and uh, and leave. So uh, we are dealing with a very complex um, trials that uh, succeed uh, to um, steal the credentials uh, from our systems, but also can steal money from uh, banks and financial institutions. And uh, we know uh, these kind of systems are very well secured and protected, but unfortunately, uh, sometimes cyber criminals succeeded to, to infect um, these systems also. What could we see during the pandemic? Uh, there was a distribution of financial trojans uh, to mobile terminals for selling credentials. I told you cyber criminals uh, saw that uh, we lately use our uh, mobile terminals uh, a lot, uh, very often, and um, many of uh, the mobile terminals are not very well protected. Uh, they don't have uh, anti-malware uh, solution. So it's very easy for cyber criminals to infect our mobile terminals. And if we are dealing with different kinds of online shopping or online transaction, it, it's easy for them to steal credentials and to manipulate uh, online transactions. Also, we saw that the cyber criminals uh, used the social engineering techniques uh, to exploit uh, the COVID-19 pandemic elements, and uh, we saw as a target uh, individuals. So the targets uh, are me, you, all of us, uh, we can be a target uh, for the cyber criminals uh, to deliver the uh, trojans. Another form of uh, malware uh, that uh, affect our systems uh, is uh, crypto jacking. Uh, this form of malware uh, use our uh, computer resources in order to um, mine uh, cryptocurrency. Uh, as you can see, there are a lot of uh, forms of uh, malware that uh, use uh, our resources to mine uh, cryptocurrency. And uh, as you saw in the latest uh, cryptocurrency market, we saw many types of uh, cryptocurrencies uh, that uh, raise their value a lot, like uh, Bitcoin or Ethereum. And uh, you could see this, uh, this picture. I uh, made this uh, screenshot uh, yesterday. So uh, there is an increase of uh, value in the cryptocurrency market. So cybercriminals also exploit uh, this uh, opportunity to mine a different uh, kind of uh, cryptocurrencies using our systems. So what uh, usually they, they do, they try to compromise uh, with uh, malware, different kind of uh, websites, especially website with uh, with a lot number with uh, with a big number of visitors and uh, all all the visitors that access uh, these uh, infected websites uh, if they don't have proper security solutions uh, they can be infected so uh, the cyber criminals will use in the end uh, all these devices doesn't matter if it is a computer like a desktop or a laptop or a mobile or a different kind of uh, internet of things uh, devices all these infected uh, systems uh, will be used by cyber criminal to to um, um, uh, to mine uh, cryptocurrency for uh, for them. So uh, during pandemic, we saw the malicious crypto miners started to rise uh, and to continue the profit uh, since uh, 2018. All this malware become more uh, sophisticated and uh, stealthy and uh, more difficult to be detected by uh, anti-malware solutions. And uh, also the cyber criminals uh, benefit lately of the increasing cryptocurrency market as you saw in the latest uh, statistic. Uh, the last malware I would like to pay your attention is the bottom uh, malware. 
that uh, infect uh, uh, the systems and uh, put them in a large uh, type of networks uh, controlled by cyber criminals. So we uh, can see a lot of uh, form of uh, malware that um, um, put the systems in a big uh, part of a botnet controlled by cyber criminals, like Configure like in 2008, uh, Zero Access in 2011, uh, till uh, Mukashi in uh, 2020. Well, uh, you see Configure uh, in, uh, was developed in 2008 um, for Microsoft operating system. And uh, I can tell you that uh, Microsoft uh, Windows uh, released a patch in uh, November 2008. And everybody who uh, updated uh, uh, the operating system or uh, has uh, just a common uh, security solutions uh, shouldn't be afraid about uh, this uh, malware, Configure. But still, I saw the latest uh, reports from different kinds of institutions and uh, cybersecurity companies. And uh, I saw in 2020, many computers were still infected uh, with this uh, uh, malware, which is very old. No, it has uh, more than uh, 10 years old. Uh, so uh, if uh, the um, users uh, updated in the last uh, 10 years uh, the operating system or just uh, have an, um, cyber security solutions, uh, Configure shouldn't be a problem. But still, it is a big problem. I saw Configure, uh, it is on a top uh, five uh, malware in many countries. So, which means uh, a lot of um, persons, a lot of users, they are using old operating systems and they don't have security, cyber security solutions. So, that's why uh, many kind of uh, old malware still can infect our uh, systems. Also, uh, Mirai in 2016 um, succeeded to, to become uh, one of the most um, uh, important uh, uh, cyber attack, uh, the most powerful cyber attack, because um, the cyber criminals could control uh, a large network of uh, infected uh, computers. Uh, most of uh, these devices were uh, cameras, CCTVs, uh, cameras, uh, systems uh, with uh, not so good uh, protection. The cyber criminals could infect all these devices, uh, almost two million devices, and all these infected devices were used uh, to to put down a different kind of websites, like uh, uh, website of Netflix and uh, Twitter uh, in 2016. These companies uh, they, they had uh, good protection uh, in uh, in front of uh, this kind of attacks, but uh, Mirai was such a big attack, uh, it succeeded to put down uh, all, all these websites. And finally, we could see uh, Mukashi in 2020. It's a new form of uh, botnet that uh, try lately to infect um, mobile phones and uh, Internet of Things uh, devices. So if you are using devices, smart devices like smart TV or smart fridge or smart air conditioner, well, these devices, uh, they don't have uh, such a good uh, cyber security protections. They can be infected and they can be used by cyber criminals to perform different kinds of cyber attacks like uh, uh, denial of service. Um, this is the scheme. Uh, the cyber criminals uh, try to infect uh, uh, more and more um, uh, computers uh, which uh, will connect to a command and control server and the cyber criminals will uh, will uh, uh, command uh, all these infected uh, computers to perform different kind of uh, attacks uh, lately uh, the botnet malware focus uh, as i told you on internet of things on all these uh, smart devices that are not very well uh, secured and uh, the cyber criminals uh, used all the infected uh, systems uh, for distributed denial of service uh, attacks. Uh, the target uh, lately were the small organizations because uh, these organizations they don't have a, a big budget for cyber security and uh, they don't have uh, good solutions to protect uh, their systems. Uh, I told you a lot of um, malware, uh, a lot of uh, issues regarding um, uh, from software point of view, but uh, you have to know even you have a good protection and uh, good solutions, uh, uh, cyber security applications and something like this, still you can have a problem with your uh, computers if uh, uh, you are vulnerable from hardware point of view. 
And you can see here a lot of uh, hardware issues uh, like uh, Spectre and Meltdown, uh, the most famous uh, vulnerabilities of the modern CPU. So uh, I can tell you that uh, most of the computers with uh, modern uh, processors, they have uh, these uh, problems. And uh, cyber criminals can exploit these vulnerabilities in order to steal some sensitive data processed by our uh, CPUs. So uh, even we have a good protection from software point of view because there are some vulnerabilities with, with our hardware. It can be a video process, a, a video card, a memory card, a CPU, or some USB ports where the cyber criminals can exploit these vulnerabilities and they can steal uh, um, data from our computers. Uh, talking about uh, attack vectors, especially online vectors, uh, so um, there is the web-based uh, attacks. Of course, uh, lately cyber criminals uh, try to infect the websites and sometimes they create uh, uh, websites infected with a different kind of uh, malware. And uh, when the visitors access uh, these websites, they can be infected if they don't have uh, properly cybersecurity solutions. Uh, the attack vectors uh, regarding web-based attacks are drive-by downloads. When uh, cyber criminals inject different kind of scripts uh, in uh, websites, and uh, when um, a visitor access uh, that website, that infected website, without doing nothing, uh, the malware can be uh, downloaded on their uh, systems and uh, their systems can be infected. Also, uh, watering uh, hole attacks, so when the cyber criminals um, uh, analyze the targets and they see that uh, most of the targets uh, access a specific website, they try to infect that website in order also to, to infect the targets. Forum jacking, uh, when uh, different kind of scripts are, uh, are inserted uh, in uh, online uh, forms, uh, when we uh, want to make an online uh, transaction, we have to use an online form. And if that uh, form is uh, infected with a kind of form jacking, cyber criminals can, uh, can retrieve all the data regarding our online uh, uh, banking accounts. And also malicious uh, URLs, when uh, the cyber criminals uh, uh, change the URL and when we uh, press, uh, when we try to access a link to a specific uh, page or to a specific website, actually we go to, to their infected uh, website. Uh, Email-based attacks also, it's, um, uh, cyber criminals uh, try to send uh, us a lot of uh, uh, malware directly to our computers using emails. So as you can see in this picture, there are a lot of forms of email-based attacks like uh, spamming, uh, spoofing, bombing, phishing, and so on. The most um, um, dangerous uh, attack is the phishing, uh, especially the spear phishing attack uh, when the cyber criminals uh, uh, collect a lot of information about the uh, target and uh, deliver uh, uh, customized uh, um, uh, phishing, customized attacks uh, uh, to, to the um, uh, target uh, emails. So um, also uh, lately we have to we have a lot of social media like uh, a lot of social networks like Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, um, Instagram, uh, TikTok, and so on. And uh, lately we saw that um, cyber criminals use uh, this uh, social media to deliver different kind of uh, scams. And uh, what are we doing? I saw in the latest statistic that actually we are helping cyber criminals by liking and sharing their scams. So they have to do just a nice uh, picture, just a interest, intrigue uh, video, and uh, a lot of person without um, testing, without uh, checking more details about that, uh, that uh, post, just uh, they will just like and share, uh, and uh, sometimes uh, we are helping cyber criminals in sharing uh, their, their scams. Um, so a lot of attacks in the online environment, uh, cyber criminals can use the websites, can use the emails, can use the social media to spread their malware and uh, their cyber attacks. But uh, you have to know that even your computer is uh, isolated and uh, doesn't have an online uh, connection, still the cyber criminals can, uh, can, um, can access uh, your computer. So there are a lot of offline uh, vectors. Uh, like um, attacks that use uh, our USB vulnerabilities, 
most of the USB ports are vulnerable. And uh, as you can see in this picture, um, uh, there is a device called the bad USB that can um, uh, rewrite uh, the USB microcontroller, uh, uh, the firm from, uh, firmware from USB microcontroller, and uh, they can cheat uh, the computer. Uh, and uh, uh, for example, if you have a protection from USB uh, sticks, USB memory sticks, well, the server terminals can use this device, bad USB, can emulate a virtual keyboard, can enter in your computer. And if you have security solutions, uh, uh, the sub can use some scripts to stop all the security solutions and to, to infect uh, the computer. Uh, so the best protection in this case uh, is uh, the um, uh, um, physical protection. If you have a server and if you have a sensitive uh, info, uh, computer with a computer with sensitive information, you have to protect uh, uh, this uh, computer, the systems in um, especially uh, space, not uh, to be able for other uh, people to access it. So physical protection is also very important. Also, there are some RAM vulnerabilities, and uh, last uh, months, uh, some researchers from Israel uh, succeeded to convert uh, our memory cards into Wi-Fi cards. So uh, this uh, technique is called AirFi. So even that uh, computer uh, is uh, protected, uh, it's uh, isolated from a physical point of view. It's not connected to, to an internet. Even uh, so, uh, if a cyber criminal has access to that computer, can convert uh, RAM into a Wi-Fi cards, and uh, they can uh, uh, steal some uh, some information uh, using this uh, this uh, uh, AirFi technique. Uh, last but not least, uh, we have to take care of electromagnetic emanation, uh, especially if we work in a sensitive area like uh, military or police field, and we are dealing with uh, with uh, um, secret uh, data, uh, which is very sensitive. We have to take care about the electromagnetic emanation because these emanations uh, can be used. Uh, and um, uh, if cyber criminals uh, are nearby, they can um, read these electromagnetic emanations uh, from our computers, and uh, uh, sometimes uh, they can steal some sensitive uh, data. Uh, well, if you are working with classified uh, data from uh, police or military field, you have to take care of uh, these electromagnetic emanations and uh, uh, those computers that contain uh, classified information, they have to be in proper uh, places uh, and to be secure from uh, this kind of uh, cyber attack. So there are a lot of cyber agents. Uh, uh, like uh, script kiddies, uh, cyber terrorists, hacktivists, uh, cyber kingdoms, but also there are a lot of um, uh, very uh, complex um, cyber attacks uh, created by or sponsored by, uh, by nation states. And uh, as you can see, uh, the balance uh, between law enforcement and cyber criminals well, is not very, very right because the law enforcement, they have a lot of laws, a lot of procedures, a lot of bureaucracy, but cyber criminals, they have no rules, no borders, a lot of resources and tools in, in the darknet. Uh, what is important uh, for law enforcement, uh, it's the cooperation, especially international cooperation, because in this way we can share different kinds of best practices uh, in uh, investigation in, uh, and uh, we can uh, share different kinds of uh, data to, to um, investigate a different kind of cyber attacks. Uh, I can uh, show you uh, that uh, even uh, cyber criminals, they don't like each other and they compete. There is a big competition in order to infect more and more uh, systems and more and more computers. Well, uh, we could uh, see in the last months that uh, it was a huge cooperation regarding different kinds of cyber criminal groups. Uh, so the group that uh, succeeded to, to develop uh, the Ryuk ransomware cooperated with the 
people who developed the emoted uh, choias and uh, with the group that uh, developed the uh, trick bot. So this cooperation uh, uh, among uh, ransomware, a uh, Trojan and uh, bot uh, net malware, uh, it was very successful for uh, cyber criminals and they succeed to infect uh, millions and millions of, uh, of computer from all around the world and to steal uh, money from their bank accounts and to uh, encrypt uh, all their files. So uh, sometimes cyber criminals can cooperate. So also we have to, to cooperate in, uh, in, in this uh, field. Uh, you can see here a lot of uh, data breaches. These are the most, uh, the latest, uh, most uh, famous uh, data breaches. So uh, you can see here uh, companies that invest uh, a lot of money in uh, cybersecurity solutions, but still they couldn't um, succeed to to secure their files, so cyber criminals succeed to to break uh, their systems and to exfiltrate a lot of data. Like uh, in March in 2020, came for that the website for adult uh, um, was compromised and the cyber criminals uh, compromised uh, more than ele um, 11 billions of, of accounts, uh, sensitive data regarding uh, credentials, regarding usernames, regarding uh, uh, pictures, uh, sensitive pictures, and so on. So uh, many, many people can uh, be blackmailed uh, using this, uh, this uh, data. Also, we could see uh, Yahoo, Marriott, uh, LinkedIn, and so on, uh, companies that invested uh, a lot of money, but still uh, they couldn't protect, uh, they could totally protect uh, um, their systems. Uh, we saw lately uh, that uh, the distribution of targets, uh, so cyber criminals uh, targeted uh, our systems, so individuals, can be uh, my uh, computer, your computer, all of our uh, computers and phones uh, represent the targets to, to the cyber criminals uh, lately. So what can we do? Uh, we need, uh, of course, uh, updated legislation. We need a strong uh, cooperation uh, mechanism. Uh, we have to share information and knowledge is very important, especially in the university field, uh, to share information, to have uh, uh, cooperation with different kind of professors from different kind of countries in order to deliver the best uh, information to, to our students. Uh, we need to uh, increase the cyber capabilities uh, to develop different kinds of laboratories uh, for cyber security and to uh, teach uh, judges, prosecutors and uh, police officers regarding cyber crime. We need to increase uh, education and awareness uh, programs. The education is very important in, in cyber security in order to uh, for all the students to understand the concept of uh, cyber crime and to know how to, to increase uh, the cyber security um, solutions. And also, not, uh, last but not least, uh, we need uh, cyber security exercises at national and international uh, level. Uh, regarding best practices, uh, we have to use uh, some security policies uh, regarding our uh, systems. We need uh, proactive security solutions. At least uh, we, we have to install an antivirus solutions or maybe a firewall uh, just to be able to stop the most common uh, cyber threats. We have to use uh, encrypted connections, especially if we are uh, working from uh, from home. If we make, uh, if we have uh, remote connections uh, with uh, our jobs, uh, with uh, with our uh, systems, for example, from uh, from university field. I know because uh, many students lately during pandemic. Uh, um, they uh, uh, access uh, the systems of, uh, from university remotely from their home. Sometimes uh, bad things could happen and uh, because of many vulnerabilities, uh, cyber criminals could exploit these vulnerabilities, could uh, infiltrate in the e-learning systems and uh, many universities from all around the globe, uh, they had different kinds of difficulties uh, uh, with their systems, with their e-learning system in this, uh, in this uh, period. So we have to be careful. We have to use encrypted connections if it's possible. We have to use uh, standard user accounts, especially if you are using uh, Windows operating systems. Don't work so much, don't use so much the um, uh, administrator account because if you are infected, the malware also will take all the privileges 
privileges of the administrative uh, account. Uh, it's very important to update the operating system. It's very important to update all the application, especially the internet browsers, uh, which can be uh, exploited if they have some vulnerabilities by, uh, by cyber criminals. And uh, it's very, very important to have a backup in case uh, the cyber criminals uh, can, uh, can uh, bypass uh, your cybersecurity solutions and they can uh, steal different kind of data and encrypt uh, uh, your, your data. Still, if you have a backup uh, and uh, you are a victim of a ransomware, you can uh, uh, put uh, restore all the data in just a couple of, uh, of minutes. So backup, uh, backup it's, uh, it's very important. Uh, so uh, I uh, present you a lot of uh, information regarding cyber attacks. So uh, you could see uh, stronger and uh, stronger uh, uh, and more difficult to detect the cyber attacks. But I think that uh, most of the victims uh, um, they um, can't stop the cyber attacks because they don't have properly cyber sec security solutions. So uh, remember to protect your data, to install some uh, cyber security solutions uh, in order to protect your systems and to help us to make the cyberspace uh, um, safer and more uh, secure. So thank you very much for your attention. These are my, my uh, details. If you want to connect me uh, to ask me different kind of things uh, lately. So thank you very much for your attention. And um, remember, try to protect uh, your, uh, your systems in order to have uh, uh, cyberspace. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for yeah. such an informative oh, lecture. Yeah. Participants, if you have any query, you can either raise your hand or you can type in the chat box. Yeah, I see a question uh, from uh, Hitan. What is during the ransomware attack? Computer contains important information, and is there any way to retrieve uh, the data? Well, I can tell you that many times uh, the ransomware attacks. Uh, uh, succeeded to steal uh, different kind of um, information, sensitive information, and then encrypt all the data. And uh, unfortunately, uh, if you are a victim of a ransomware and all your data is encrypted, um, there are two solutions. Uh, well, let's say three. Uh, first solution is to go to the normalransom.org website and try to discover where maybe you can find the decryption key and uh, you can decrypt all your files. The second uh, thing you can do, uh, if you have a backup, you can restore all your data in just a couple of minutes. So you don't need any decryption key if you have a good backup. But be careful, uh, don't, if you have a backup solution, don't try to connect that uh, backup uh, uh, system or device uh, nonstop because uh, sometimes uh, the cyber criminals can uh, encrypt all your files from your computer. But if your backup is connected, also they can go to your backup and encrypt also all the files. So if you have a backup, uh, don't uh, make uh, con um, 24 hours uh, connection with your backup. And uh, if you don't have a backup and if you don't uh, have a if you if you can't find the decryption key, uh, it's your choice to to see if you, it's working to 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 uh, pay the ransom to the cyber criminals or no. But uh, be careful. Sometimes uh, even you pay the ransomware, cyber criminals don't deliver the decryption key. So in the worst scenario, you are losing your data and also you are losing uh, uh, your money. So the best way you can do to protect yourself in uh, in case of ransomware to have a backup. Uh, try to back up all your data at least one time in a month or something like this. Uh, if you're working with uh, a lot of information and uh, you change uh, day by day, uh, try to use a cloud system and uh, back up your, uh, your system in a cloud. And um, also use some security solutions uh, because the modern security solutions uh, can, can um, help you make different kind of backup and um, protect your system in front of a ransomware. Uh, if um, if uh, sometimes uh, with your solution still uh, you lost your data and uh, cyber criminals uh, use uh, the new generation of uh, ransomware to steal your data and then to encrypt your data, 
tell, I can tell you this is a is a bad uh, situation because cyber criminals can uh, can force you to pay the ransomware. Otherwise, they can make public uh, your your data. So that's why it's very important uh, to to have security solutions and uh, to try to back up your data because. In case you are losing your data, you still have your backup, and in just a couple of minutes, you restore all your data. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Do you have any other question? Uh, Dr. Cosman, I don't think that there is any other question. I think uh, we can wind up now. Uh, thanks for your session. Thank you also for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much. Comprehensive manner, Dr. Cosman, you have advised us all about the aspects of information technology and the best practices that we can enter to. Thank you so much for being the keynote speaker too for the day, day one of the CH 2021. Thank you, Dr. Cosman. Thank you also. This is extended to all our participants and the delegates who have been the part of the inaugural session of CH 2021. And the plea is being made to all of you who join your respective designated sessions as per the convener's updates, wishing you a stupendous learning experience. Good luck for the day. Participants, please join your technical session according to your date and time.